My name is Jason. And my name is David. And this is a comic strip AP of Dungeon World featuring the story of Domenico Castafiel. And when we last saw Domenico, he had paid a visit or attempted to pay a visit to Iotho Bruno, but discovered that Iotho's palazzo has been taken over by some kind of creature, plant, infection, something. It's a little unclear. You did not um, investigate it any further. Um, Melchior, the little maggot godling, wanted you to address the matter immediately, but you kind of said, nope, we are going to take care of Lady Francesa first and then come back to this. Whether you come back to it or not, that's entirely up to you. But I want to just uh, say that Melchior will begrudgingly accept this and you guys can just proceed apace to Lady Francesa's mansion. Does that sound okay? Yeah, I would not be surprised if for some reason Melchior is compelled because he made it a legitimate deal already. Yeah, yeah. And especially if he's a demon, right? Like they're kind of like bound to things like that, right? Like contracts and whatnot. Exactly. So. Yeah. Cool. So let's just fast forward a little bit. Let's say you, you get your gondolier. Um, he's probably surprised by how quickly uh, you're coming back. Um, he hadn't even finished his midnight uh, midnight snack. And he rows you um, up the channels to to Lady Francesa's manse. I just want to keep going here. You step up. You you know. I assume you just kind of knock on the door or whatever. The major domo greets you at the front. Are your preparations complete, Lord Castafier? We have what we need. How is the lady of the house? She is not well but she's ready. Then let us make all haste. So let's remind the listeners about the nature of the ritual. We determined that per the move, um, we have four requirements or four things we've chosen from the ritual move on the wizard playbook. The first is that you were going to need the help of a necromancer. That's Mog. Now, we're saying, we said before that you sent Mog ahead, and so maybe Mog is already there making her preparations with Lady Francesa. The second element was you needed a creature that can go inside Lady Francesa and physically extract whatever this poison or this curse or whatever it is that's inside of her. Okay. I think we decided it was black lotus powder, right? Get yeah, that's that what we had discovered. Yeah. Yep. The third thing is that you risk getting the attention or um, or putting yourself in danger from whatever being has done this to Lady Francesa. And in fact, that's kind of what the stakes are here for the fourth point, which is it's it could be unreliable, right? So you're gonna, it's going to force a roll right, to see if it, it actually succeeds. Does that sound good? Yeah, that's, uh, I, that's my understanding of what's about to happen. Indeed, indeed. We've been building up to this moment. I thought we'd start by describing what the room looks like, where the ritual is going to take place, what sorts of preparations have been made, just what's the general mood in the room? Where are we even? Where do you think the ritual is being done in the house? Well, so it has to be done in a place of power. And the place of power that she has on hand, that she has prepared and and, and built into her home is a place that is deep, deep underground. I doubt that any of her her acquaintances who come to see her kind of magic uh, really are uh, aware that this place exists because it's a little bit sinister and it's uh, at least sinister looking and it's buried it's buried in a natural cave. Oh nice. okay, good. So there's something about the untapped element of this that is where the magic is coming from. There is a slab in the middle of the room that is naturally forming, but it's big enough to serve that purpose. Nothing in here is carved or anything. It's just the the living rock. And that living rock is what's giving off what's 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 this power is coming from and i think there are even stones around here gemstones that have a light of their own oh nice what about implements what sorts of ritual implements will you need uh, to do your part of the ritual 
So I, Domenico, personally am going to have to use particular candles that will be surrounding her. Uh, Some of them will be on her skin because of the nature of this ritual and how it's working. These are made out of wax that is rendered from uh, from animal fat and not not just regular old wax. I won't just go into what kind of animal fat they are rendered from. Probably just as well. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to need a hallucinogenic drug for me because I have to be able to perceive what is happening inside of her body to help Mog uh, guide and, and, and get into uh, her and help. And, and the way that I'm doing that is I'm going to be able to see through uh, Melchior's eyes. Ah, very good. Let's talk about Lady Francesa. Lady Francesa is laid out on the slab, and I think this poison is very near completing its job, right? She looks pretty bad. Before, you know, whatever it was, a week a week before in the fiction when you were last kind of talking to her, there were like black striations like on her skin, which were indicating what the, you know, kind of what the what the poison was doing to her. It's progressed quite a bit from there. I thought we could each offer a detail that shows like how diminished Lady Francesa is as a result of this poison. I'd like to start by saying that most of her hair has fallen out and her skin is just um, a little loose on her face. Like it almost looks like like a wad of sort of pinkish dough that's been roughly stretched over her skull, right? Like it's, it's whatever this stuff is doing to her, it's just breaking her down, right? What do you see? I get close to her face to try and see if she's conscious and she she blinks and you can hear it you can hear her blink because it's like it's like flesh moving over sandpaper her eyes are so dry and they're actually a little scaly and that scaly i notice is actually dripping kind of down her face a little bit like like it was just forming scales and the scales would fall off and kind of fall down her face I can see similar scaly scaliness coming from the corners of her mouth. And I take her hand t- t- because she isn't very responsive. And that's when I notice how her fingernails have fallen off. She's in rough shape. Mog is there because she knows her way around a body, right? We've established that. So she is going to be essentially doing the surgery that's going to get inside of Lady Francesa. We're essentially splitting her open, right? Well, each of us, I, I thought we could just each offer a detail about how Mog approaches her work. Um, I'll start. Mog is nothing if not um, lurid and inappropriate. As you're making your preparations, if you're, as you're burning the hallucinogenic and that kind of thing, you see that Mog is running her hands over Lady Francesa's body, the parts that are still smooth and intact, and she's just transfixed by what she sees. She's very much enjoying this. There's something about Lady Francesa's existing between a really long life and a sudden painful, decaying death that is really appealing to the the necromancer inside of her. Mm, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. As far as what Mog needs to do to help get this ritual underway is making a, a, a very a very precise incision uh, that is going to be in the abdomen just below the ribs just deep enough to help Melchior get in and not so deep that we're hitting anything vital. And uh, hopefully she knows her craft. And that happens. Melchior slips inside and you begin the magic portion of the ritual that allows you to see through Melchior's eyes. What does that feel like? At first it's, uh, it's bizarre because of the perspective of things. I 
close my eyes and open his and can see Mog looking very, very large. Um, and her hand, you know, just looking enormous all around me. And then I'm being thrust into this bloody uh, mess. And then suddenly the vision changes to seeing like an array of fantastic colors. Apparently this is how this, this creature can perceive in the dark. Uh, and, uh, and it's able to perceive like different elements of like human interior based on different colors. Like even though to us, it might all look red to, to Melchior, it's all looking different. And when you finally find the black Lotus taint inside of her, what does it look like? How do you perceive it? So as this lump is moving around inside of her, under her flesh, as as anyone outside of her body would perceive, and she's probably twitching uncomfortably, it looks like, it looks like a solid gold substance to Melchior. Like something he would really, really want and be interested in. Oh, interesting. And now let's have the roll. Roll plus int. Seven. Seven. (laughs) (laughs) Indeed. You are going to extract the poison in the manner that I'll have you describe for me. And you're going to save Lady Frances's life. There's a complication. And it's coming but I'm not going to reveal it to you yet. For the time being, just tell us what the successful ritual looks like. I'm laying on my back, like I'm kind of like twitching and stuff under the influence of this hallucinogen. And I'm like screaming really loudly because I I can't really control my, my volume under this drug, but I can control what I'm saying and I'm directing Melchior what to do. That's how he knows what he's supposed to do. He's just listening to my instructions. And I'm like, that's it. That's it. Get it. And he starts to worm his way forward. And then he, uh, he, he bites the edge of it with his mouth and then starts to back up, pulling it out because it's much bigger than he is. Uh, and it's kind of got these gold veiny tendrils laced in and around other things. And it's all pulling out like a root out of the ground. And he backs up out of the hole. And uh, that's when I open my my realized Domenico's eyes, uh, and I see him pull it out, and it flop. He flops onto the ground, and the thing flops onto the ground, and it's just a black, putrid thing that even the even the heavy scent of my hallucinogen can't cover how bad and rotten and evil this thing smells. Hi, this is Jason from The Gauntlet. If you enjoyed this episode of Comic Strip AP, be sure to check out our YouTube channel. We have many other Comic Strip AP shows available, each organized in their own sequential playlist for easy listening. Just go to youtube.com and search for Gauntlet RPG.